All right, my project for today is uh, to try and see if I can get this cast iron cylinder off this old Sears, uh, they call them a twingle engine, because I think I can use some of these parts. They may be beneficial to me. And I thought I'd kind of document how to do this. It's, if you got an old part like that, an old engine or something, it's it's kind of good to try to take it apart first, I figure, so I can make my mistakes on something that doesn't matter so much. The story behind this engine is I, I bought this from a junkyard. It was laying up on top of a Buick, and uh, somebody where I work told me that, hey, there's one of those twingles, uh, you know, an old Allstate bike laying on top of a Buick, and at this junkyard. So on the way home from work, I stopped off at the junkyard and asked them about it. And they said, uh, yeah, I could buy it. And they just said it weighs, I don't know, a couple hundred pounds, they figured. So they sold it to me for eight bucks, which is what they thought they'd get, I suppose, for it as scrap value. It was probably worth eight bucks. So uh, anyways, it was a pretty cheap deal. But obviously, there wasn't a whole lot on this bike that was any good. It was practically a new engine it still had the sticker on the speedometer uh, the break-in sticker telling them the shift points uh, when you got a new bike you know don't go any faster than this before you shift gears and so forth so it was real low mileage on the speedometer so I disassembled the bike and saved this engine uh, and the problem with the engine was it was laying on the Buick but it was laying with the carburetor side facing up. That's how they threw this motorcycle up on top of the Buick. Well, rainwater went right in the carburetor and down in here. So I would assume that inside this engine is all going to be rusted up. It's locked up real good. The cylinders, pistons don't move. I don't know whether it was seized before, but it sure is seized now. It's probably really rusty. So my first project is to figure out how to get this thing apart and one of the problems is that they use some rather strange if you can see them here these uh, head bolts down in here they're square and uh, I got to looking around and I found something that I think will fit this is uh, a t-handle that they use on acetylene tanks you can buy them fairly cheaply at a uh, welding supply shop uh, used for the acetylene tank to turn on and off the valve but it has a square in the end of it as you can see there and I figure I'm gonna put that on there and see if I can get these head bolts loose as being the first step to getting this thing unstuck and saving this cylinder and head on this thing and then if I get that apart maybe I'll try to take the rest apart I there's transmission gears and stuff in here that could be useful so uh, anyways, that's my project for today. Well, this is what I wanted to see. And uh, as you can see here, things are pretty bad in the cylinder. They're really rusted up in there. Uh, the other problem that I have is the piston is down so far it's uncovering the port. So... I can't use uh, something like this, which is a spark plug, which I brazed on a fitting onto a spark plug body, just busted the ceramic insulator out of there, and put some pipe fittings together there and a piece of steel brake line. And on the end of the brake line, uh, let's see if I can get this right there there's a uh, zerk fitting on there now normally what I do and what you can do on any four stroke engine is you know back off the valves so they're closed uh, and then fill a cylinder full of oil preferably penetrant if you put penetrating oil in there uh, then you put the I'd put the head back on and screw that thing in a spark plug hole with the valves closed and use the grease gun to force the oil down past the st piston rings, past all the rust and everything, and of course it would put an immense amount of pressure on the piston, 
and you know try to free the thing up that way uh, using hydraulic force pushing the oil ahead of it and that works real well because a grease gun will give you about 10,000 psi which would put an awful lot of pressure on a piston that size so I can't use that because it's being two cycle and the ports are open I knew something was wrong because I sprayed penetrating oil in there and the oil came out the exhaust ports and was you know laying on the ground so I knew I had a problem the uh, head bolts I was able to get those out that worked pretty well using the uh, acetylene tank wrench and uh, didn't hurt them any or anything they're eight millimeter bolts however I think I'll replace these with uh, stainless steel ones maybe uh, socket head cap screws anyways I'll put in there uh, and it might go stainless just so they don't rust although that's really not too much of a problem on an old motorcycle having rusty bolts but uh, they're all the same length so I think I'll order up some 8 millimeter uh, grade 8 socket head cap screws and that will make some good head bolts for the thing uh, the head as you can see isn't too carboned up so like I say this thing wasn't run much at all I knew that so I don't know what happened to it I'm sure there's a story behind it whether people couldn't get parts or didn't know what was wrong with it or the engine got stuck hard saying but uh, I'm wanna next step will be to see if I can make a tool is what I'm thinking now to bridge across between the head bolt holes uh, that will push on the piston uh, and try to drive the piston down or lift the cylinder up I want to lift a cylinder up maybe and I'll loosen these these bolts down here and see if I can get that cylinder off there by jacking it off here like that but it's going to take making a plate of steel or something to go across with a jack screw I'm thinking here to push down on the piston but I'll make a round uh, slug of aluminum or something I'll put in there to push against because I don't want to push directly on the piston not that I think I can save these but there's no no sense in mangling something if you don't have to besides I don't know how bad they'll be you never know what you can use so I try to save as much as I can uh, I do see somebody here has been jacking on this so apparently they were trying to turn the thing this cover was off of it of course and uh, they were probably trying to turn it with this bolt and found out the engine was locked up and they couldn't budge it so anyways it should be a good uh, engine for parts and the transmission hopefully the gears in there will be perfect just like new so I might need something off of here so I think I'm gonna keep it this is the <clears throat> tool that I've come up with to try to get the stuck pistons out of that engine uh, I couldn't find a bolt long enough with a lot of threads on it and the pistons are stuck about, about bottom dead center I think they're down even with the exhaust port and on this engine I can see the exhaust port is quite a bit above the crankcase so there's got to be a pretty long piston in there that needs to be pushed out I want to make sure I got plenty of travel so since I couldn't find bolts that had a long thread on there I just made something out of some all thread it's a 5 8 fine thread all thread it's a 5 8 18 thread I made these things and relieved them in the center because I found out the pistons are domed and I don't want this thing rocking on there putting too much pressure in any one place so I want to spread the pressure to the outside edge of this when I go to push on it because I might have to push on it pretty hard if this works uh, the holes uh, that I put in this metal plate which is just a piece of cold roll steel about half inch thick I found uh, I just lay out lines I laid out lines on there uh, punched them put them in the drill press and, and uh, drilled four holes uh, that's what's going to hold this plate onto the head and then for extra safety I'll probably try putting a, a wad of uh, maybe a paper towel or cardboard or something between this little device which I'm going to drop in the hole to push against the reason I made these is because the pistons are stuck down in there so far 
and so I can push against such a long object as that and uh, not have the screw thread sticking out so far in there. So uh, that's why it's supposed to work and now we'll find out if it does what I think it's going to do. Now I'm starting to get this loose here at the base. These screws are driving the piston. It appears that the front piston is the one that's stuck. The back one, as you can see, I could pry that up pretty easy, almost, almost by twisting this with my hand. So it's the front one that's really stuck. And that's why you have to work back and forth. Tighten one, uh, turn, tighten this, you know, just a little bit on one, a little bit on the other. Keep going back and forth between these two screws uh, to keep the tension even. But I found out this one that's the front one that's really stuck. So this is the one that I gotta I gotta turn a lot. And I'm using a pretty good size wrench, which is this big thing here, and it really really takes quite a bit, but it is coming loose slowly. Uh, I suppose if I really had problem I could take a torch maybe and heat right in here around the base of this thing. It's hard to heat the cylinder what with all these cooling fins because they're trying to cool it off which is what they're supposed to do but uh, maybe getting it warmer would help but uh, but this thing probably seized up or something was probably what happened to them because it's it's really tight I think it's more than just rust. I'll find out as soon as I get it apart. This is uh, pretty much how this is working. Now you got to keep these threads all greased up uh, and you can see that I'm starting to have some luck with the pistons. The rear piston is not stuck. It's coming out pretty easy. This front one is the one that's the trouble. So uh, I'll just keep working at it until I get that sucker out of there. Uh, good thing I got some oversized pistons. I could bore this cylinder out and save it if I wanted to. But right now I'm just practicing and trying to see how one of these babies comes apart because I never had one like this before. Well, I got the pistons out of the cylinder finally. As you can see, they're really long pistons. And this front one was really stuck. That baby was a mess. This one, uh, back one, came out fairly easy. I mean, you had to push on it pretty hard, but not near as hard as this front one. That was the one that was really stuck. Uh, this gizmo I made for uh, pushing them out, I had to make a few modifications to it, but these little uh, spacers I put in there, since the pistons were stuck way down, uh, I just kind of wrapped a paper towel around it that kind of centered them in the cylinder for me and uh, put grease on the end of the screw here on the top and uh, used that to force the thing out because the pistons are domed so you wouldn't want to push on them with something that was flat. So I kind of made this concave so I pushed the pushing area was more out this way and then just wrapped the paper towel and folded it over there like that and that's what I used to force them out with. Uh, these screws uh, I ended up putting uh, nuts and brazing them on there. Uh, the nuts stick down in the cylinder head and the thing you know bolts on I'll show you this way. Uh, the reason I did that was that the, there wasn't enough thread, uh, you know, half inch thick piece of coal roll wasn't enough thread. The threads didn't pull out of the coal roll steel, but they'd strip on the, on the piece of all thread. I, I didn't have exactly the right size tap drill, uh, so my threads probably weren't 100% depth in there like they should be too, but... Uh, Anyways, I just took some nuts, brazed them on the back, and run the tap through there. Now I've got, you know, uh, over an inch of threaded length on there. Uh, put a little never seize on there. I, I use, you know, some never seize on this stuff. And that keeps the threads from galling. And that worked real well. But it, it took a lot of wrenching and cranking to get them out of there. But, uh, yeah, they're out now, so... Uh, that part of the job's over with. Uh, now I've got other things I want to practice taking off, like uh, some of this with the generator and points and so forth like that. 
uh, take a look at that. But as you can see, this thing was laying outside in the junkyard for quite a while, and it's probably going to have a lot of problems in getting things apart. Well, this is what the pistons look like. Uh, this back piston, you can see they've got three rings on, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you can see here where the pin is. So they're pinned rings. Uh, really quite deep things. Uh, they're pretty pretty tall. Uh, interesting. Uh, I gotta see if I can fix these things up and get them straightened out. And I got the cylinder uh, soaking in a hot tank of uh, soapy water right now. <laughs> 